Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the November Smart Art Box. This video is sponsored by SmartArtBox.com. They send a surprise box of art supplies right to your doorstop every month if you are interested in subscribing. They also send instructions on how to use the ingredients in the box so that you won't be lost as to what to do when those supplies show up. Now this month we have a variety of clay tools. We have some basswood clay tools. We have some rubber clay sculpting tools. We have some paint brushes and we have something very exciting that I've never tried before, which is Sculpey Air Dry Clay. I've used their polymer clay in the past that you bake in the oven, so I was really uh, curious and excited to try polymer clay that you don't have to bake. As always, you get a sticker. Um, this box also comes with some, I would say they're about four inches by four inches, basswood um, panels that you could do a sculpture onto if you wanted to do the relief project that's in the brochure. There's also some ribbon pottery tools for carving out details, and there is some acrylic paint. So you've got everything you need to do a variety of projects. Now I'm really curious about this air dry clay because I wanted to make um, some brush rests and I thought this would just be the perfect um, the perfect product project to try that out with. And I'm pulling out probably I'd say about two ounces worth of clay. I don't want to have too much out because I'm not sure how quickly this will dry out. So I just folded over the excess packaging. When you open the clay just cut off enough like just so you go past the seal so you end up having enough to fold over and seal it back up again. You don't want to leave that exposed to the air. I'm using the uh, the wooden panels there just to help flatten out my clay, just so I have a nice smooth fingerprintless um, like a bar of clay. And what I'm thinking here is I just kind of want a tapered brush rest that gets a little bit lower on the sides. And I'm going to use one of these clay tools. Actually, you could use a pencil or anything round to make the divots that my brush will rest in. And I'm also kind of pressing it down like this, so hopefully it won't tip over when it's dry it'll have a nice base to it um, it'll be nice and flat on the bottom so for this one I made five little divots and I'm gonna experiment with a few other sizes too now this technique would also be really good for chopstick rests um, now I noticed I got a little bit of cracking as I was um, kind of pressing the clay and I wanted it to be nice and smooth and I didn't want to see fingerprints so I just used a little bit of water on my fingers to smooth out any um, any cracking or any like uh, blemishes that I had now this one I did I think seven divots on it hold seven brushes because again I'm just experimenting and then I thought I'm gonna make some chopstick rests while I'm at it because um, I always think they're cute they're handy to use as brush rests but I also like it so if I'm making like um Asian cuisine for dinner and I put chopsticks out they just have a nice place to sit on the table and I think it would actually be handy if you're going to a Chinese restaurant to bring something like that with you so you can rest your chopsticks and not have the tips of them on the table which is I don't know I think that's kind of gross so um, a nice way to keep your chopsticks nice and sanitary or use them as brush rests I'm really hoping I'm gonna be able to mimic the look of pottery with the uh, with the paint and um, that's what I'm gonna really hope for now I wanted to make all the chopstick rests the same size so I tried to get equal size balls of clay and then I'm just pressing them flat between a couple layers of waxed paper and then I'm going to cut that in half and I'm using a palette knife for this you could also use a clay blade or a razor blade but I like to use a palette knife for this because I don't have to worry about cutting myself but the palette knives are thin enough that it slices right through the clay without much drag um, so I mean these aren't perfect but I you know they're good enough and again I'm using that technique where I put some water on my finger and smooth this out just like you would with like stoneware clay so this this polymer clay does appear to be water soluble. It is water soluble. Um, I don't know if you could revive the clay if it was dry by adding water, but I did let it dry up and I did kind of wet my finger and rub an area of the uh, the finished clay and it did feel a little bit slimy. So um, I don't think I would call this absolutely 100% water resistant like polymer, like your oven baked polymer clay would be. Uh, so I think it's really important to paint it and glaze it when you're done. So it did take probably close to a week for mine to feel completely dry. I did, uh, as you know, well, you may know I work in the basement and so I brought the clay pieces upstairs into the you know warmer drier area air of the house to dry and it still took me probably I, I probably would say a full week before I felt confident enough to to paint these now I'm using some gloss medium and varnish mixed in with the acrylic paints to try to thin them down enough so I got like a glassy ceramic glaze and I have to say the paints that they sent here were very uh, high coverage so I had to add a ton of the um, probably uh, four parts glaze to one part paint to get the uh, transparency that I wanted on the paint. So don't worry about that paint not covering. That paint's going to cover just fine. I ended up even adding more glaze than this. 
uh, because I wanted it to be really uh, glossy and really transparent, um, like pottery glaze would be. Because that's what I wanted. The I wanted it to look like they were ceramic um, when they were done. So um, that was a little technique that that I used there. The kit does not come with with the gloss varnish, but any sort of like gloss varnish, like a Mod Podge or even an Elmer's glue, would be fine. And you can thin down your acrylics as much as you want with a gloss medium, um, because it is basically it's basically paint without pigment in it. It's not going to uh, disrupt the bonding ability of your paint. So that's something you wouldn't want to thin it down that much with water because it might not stick. The paint would break down. But if you're thinning it with a gloss medium or a gloss varnish, you'll be just fine. Now this is kind of what I was going for, this very, very thin veil of color. Um, so there's a piece of advice. Just put a tiny little drop of paint if you're doing this because otherwise you're going to waste, you're going to waste paint. You have to add so much glaze to it to get it to that transparent and I even added some white to it because it's like it was still too vibrant so kudos to smart art for putting a nice vibrant paints in there because I think most people that are painting their clay pieces are going to want that better coverage you're going to want that brighter color so you'll definitely not have trouble with that now I did like this clay and honestly I was um, I was a little concerned having that much of it. Like, would I be able to use it up in time before it dried out? But luckily I didn't have that problem because my daughter Lila wanted to make um, a, like a little kind of diorama, but like, so that she could set her jewelry up on it, use that as a jewelry display. Here, I'm just playing with leftover paint. Do you guys do that? Do you like when you've got leftover paint on your palette? I hate to waste it. So I'm making some like Rorschach <laughs> uh, folds and designs just because I think it looks pretty. That says nothing to do with the tutorial, but boy, isn't it pretty? I think it's pretty. But anyways, my daughter used up the rest of the clay making a jewelry thing, and um, and it's still it's not dry yet. But uh, maybe I'll share a photo of that on my blog when it's all done because she's pretty pretty crafty. Uh, and there you can see the brush rest in action. I really liked how stable it was. It doesn't need to be that stable to do the job. Um, and I love these little chopstick rests. I think they're super cute. Although I'd probably just use them as brush rests because um, because it's so handy just to kind of keep your brush from rolling away on you. You know how it you know how they go. They roll away. They go on a little adventure sometimes when you're painting and I just think they look like little jewels and I really enjoyed this project and I just wanted to kind of put it in action and just kind of pretend what it would be like to paint because my painting did not come out good but I just wanted to play with it and see how it was going to hold my brushes and by golly it did the job just fine um <laughs> And so you're going to see a very sad looking painting here, but I was just kind of wondering how it would be to use them. And it was great. And I'm definitely going to keep one of these out on my table. I generally do not have more than five brushes going in a painting. So I think the smaller one there is going to suit me just fine. A lot of times I'm just using one or two brushes. So even the chopstick rest would, um, would do the trick, but uh, but yeah, it worked. I'm happy with the project came out. I know it was pretty simple, but you know what? Hey, it's December. We don't have a ton of time. We're looking for those quick and easy projects. And guys, this would make a really fun gift. Now, if you need the gift like tomorrow, you'll need to use polymer clay that you can bake in the oven because I don't think the clay is going to dry fast enough for you. Um, maybe if you lived in the desert, it would, but um, just like, you know, general winter time, I don't think your clay is going to dry fast enough to, to paint it the next day. So you could definitely do the same project with polymer clay and it would work just fine. Just follow the instructions on the package for baking. But I did like, I liked using it, I liked making it. So in my mind, that is a successful project. If you have any um, any questions on this, you can let me know in the comments below. Um, you can check out the link to smartartbox.com and learn more about their art subscription boxes if you're curious. They sent, I think this would be really nice for homeschool parents, or especially, hey, everyone's a homeschool parent this year, right? Um, because it does give you ideas in the box on what to do with the products. And I like that because you're not just on your own it gives you a little art history lesson so if you are doing a homeschool curriculum with your kids it shows you um, what to do with it who what kind of artwork has been done with these products who else you can follow like famous artists that use these techniques and um, it gives you a really nice kind of backbone for the education um, of course if you're an artist like me who has tons of supplies it might not be as useful but I think homeschool parents it would really be a great benefit especially this year when you're kind of left to your own devices um, as far as providing that art education for your kids. So uh, I hope you found this tutorial fun and useful. Um, I sure did. And I had a ball playing with these supplies. Thanks to Smart Art Box for sponsoring this video. Thanks to you for watching it. And until next time, happy crafting.